Hello Internet, it's Tristan PJ here and I'm back from vacation as you guys probably know. Anyways, space, a lot of unique challenges to getting. The gravity well is a bitch. Can we find a cheap and safe solution to get us into space on Bumps in the Road? of the major problems that come up with getting into space. One, 11.3 kilometers per second. It's how much power and speed you need to escape the Earth's gravity field, gravity well. The other problem is G's. That acceleration is not exactly survivable by a human. Acceleration can kill a human very easily. Uh, even a few G's can make a human suffer serious medical problems. And a lot of them will. So currently the reason why space is so unprofitable and so dangerous or so resource inefficient is that it, the only way we really have to go into space right now is rockets. A rocket can cost, uh, well to carry something into space right now with a rocket costs anywhere between four and forty thousand dollars a kilogram. This is the reason why it's really not feasible to do any sort of private space program or private uh, enterprise into space it's also the reason why space programs are so expensive and why exploration is so difficult. So first, let's talk about the alternative of the space elevator. It's one of the more popular options. Uh, it boasts that it could get stuff into space with as low as $100 a kilogram, but it suffers from some major problems. First is its tensile strength. Uh, it involves taking a cable and having a counterweight in geostationary orbit and a cable that runs down to the Earth and an elevator goes up into space. Uh, the problem is... The tensile strength required for that would be ridiculous. Uh, there's currently no known substance that can uh, sustain that strength until about the 1990s when we started discovering something called carbon nanotubes. Now, carbon nanotubes are an amazing, uh, very interesting invention. But the problem is we've never been able to make them more than just a few millimeters, and this one would have to be this would have to be at least 35,800 kilometers long. These things would have to be built at the equator for centrifugal force to work right, uh, and also while on the elevator the passengers will go through something called the Van Allen Belt, which is a an area of heavy radiation. So there would have to be radiation shielding on the elevator, which of course makes it heavier, which would make it even harder to get up in space. This would also cause a navigational hazard for both air and spacecraft, and it's susceptible to things like space junk and meteoroids. And if one of those breaks, uh, as explained in, I believe, the book uh, Red Planet or something like that at Mars, about Martian uh, independence, that had a space elevator in it, that uh, snapping the cable could Snapping a 35,000 kilometer long cable could devastate large swaths. The second is let's talk about the launch loop. Now, no new materials need to be invented to make a launch loop. It can support many launches an hour, unlike the space elevator. And it puts things up only 80 kilometers up in space, so no worry about the Van Allen belt problem. You can also accelerate things in the space on a 3G acceleration, which makes it safe for a human, so it is possible to get humans in the space this way. The problem with it is large radiate or large electricity. Uh, this thing would require to be in a very uh, sparsely populated area, but would have huge electricity costs. It would be about 2,000 kilometers long and 80 meters tall, or 80 kilometers tall. And uh, it would be this sort of vacuum tube, like the one that's being uh, proposed between New York and uh, Los Angeles would be a kind of version of that, except it would be in, uh, it would go up into low Earth orbit. The problem is that kinetic energy could be released, and that is enough kinetic energy to possibly even use a nuclear bomb. There'd be no radiation, but lots of damage in case of a failure. There's also it's also a loop, like you go up, down, and around, and then up and down and around again. And those turnarounds are potentially extremely unstable structures. There's a few other alternatives as well. There's the light craft, which would use a parabolic mirror combined with a laser, a powerful laser, to superheat air and push it up into space with a rather cheap uh, source. The problem is, a laser that powerful, that can fire that long of a distance, doesn't exist. There's the space gun, which is quite literally a magnetic gun that fires stuff into space. Uh, this would be, because of acceleration, too dangerous for humans. Uh, it would be fatal to humans, but it could be a cheap way to get cargo and fuel in this. Then there's also the Star Tram, which is a maglev uh, rocket powered tram that uh, is actually supposed to finish in 2020, and it could take cargo into space for a fairly cheap price as well. This uh, boasts $43 a kilogram. 
Uh, it has a proposed generation two that will be slow enough for humans, but there is it requires a very large structure, larger than uh, the space loop, for example. And the last is the stream, the space fountain, which is there'd be this closed loop of pellets that are proposed up in space and then sent back down and back up again, and then you put something in it and it would be pushed up by those pellets, by magnetically propelled pellets. Uh, this could work, but that's a highly theoretical structure. Uh, personally, I think that if we are going to be optimistic about any of these solutions, the space loop, which can use currently usable technology, just would need a lot of investment. That seems to be the ticket. Now, will we ever see one? Well, that's an economic problem, and unfortunately, I don't see people getting together to work low. This has been Bumps in the Road.